Before I begin, I need to point out something about this oil filter housing. It's not complete. So when you're watching this video, don't be concerned that there are pieces missing. For instance, this rear plate for the connection to the turbo oiler line and to the oil pressure gauge is missing. I don't have an extra one, so I can't show it in the video. Also, it's gutted right here. This is where the oil cooler thermostat is located. So as I go through this sequence in this video of getting this installed back on a diesel engine, don't be concerned if you see this missing or you see this plate missing. This is all I had on hand to demonstrate. This video is being filmed in late October of 2023 and it's an update on our oil filter housing gasket install kit. We recently did this job on a W123 and Jerson and I got together and said, we've got to come up with some even better tools to get this thing on and off that engine block. You've got five bolts that hold it on the block and they're very hard to get to. So what we did is we came up with a modification on one tool, added a couple other tools. Now this gasket only applies to the W116 and W123 chassis. These two pieces, you're not going to need for a W126. It's really hard to get that oil pressure line off the backside of this plate down here. Now the plate's missing, so I can't really show you, but what this wrench will allow you to do, and the fact that it's a B-nut wrench will keep from rounding off the edges of that nut, is you get underneath the car and you get this on that nut and you've got the plastic line coming up and going up through the firewall. And even though it's real short, you can get something and either pry against it or tap on it to get it loose because I can't give you a long wrench. You're going to end up running into either the steering box or, or the subframe. Now, let me explain the sequence of installing this housing and installing the bolts. I cannot film this under the car. It's just too restricted, but I think I can film this on the bench and it'll give you a pretty good idea how you're going to have to tackle this once you get it down in and up to the engine block. Now, let me explain the installation sequence. If you don't follow this, you probably will run into a little bit of a problem. First off, you notice we include a couple zip ties with the gasket. And what you want to do is you want to zip tie the gasket in place so it doesn't fall off when you set this down up against the block. It's very hard to manipulate the gasket in there. So I found a couple of zip ties in place here and you put them in the bottom holes. Don't put them in these two holes here. If you do, you won't be able to cut them off once you get it started. Two zip ties, don't over tighten them. You don't want to crush the gasket. Then you have to install the long bolt. The long bolt has to go in you could not get the long bolt in to that hole once you set this down in place because you'll have interference with the steering box. So this bolt has to be in place, two zip ties on these lower two holes, and then you're gonna take this and you're gonna drop it down from above. You can't put it in from underneath the car. You have to drop it down from above. Be very careful when you're working it down into position that you don't damage this gasket. Once you get it close, you can take this oil cooler line, the upper one, and maybe just start this finger tight. And that will help to stabilize the oil filter housing because you're now you're gonna to have to transition underneath the car to complete the installation. So using one of these two tools, there's a clearance problem against the steering box. So this is what this is for. This is why this has been cut. You can start this with a wrench or you can start this by hand, get the center bolt started. Make sure the gasket stays centered. Once the center bolt is started, you don't have to run it all the way in. You want to start this bolt next, right up here. Top forward side, push it in, make sure it goes through the gasket. And then you can start pushing this in. You can either use the long wrench like this or we now provide this small section of six millimeter hex with a rubber hose and you can use this you can put this over the top so you could bend the hose and you can still 
turn that bolt in. Now once you get this bolt and this bolt started, then go ahead and start this bolt. And that's why we did this funny bend in this hex wrench. Because you have a pipe coming down here and with a straight wrench you don't get much travel. But with this bend, we're now able to give you a lot more travel as you take and move this bolt in or out. If you have the room, you can put this small piece on with the rubber hose. If you need to cut the rubber hose due to restrictions or, or interference, feel free. You don't need to leave this rubber hose at that length. So once you get these three bolts started, then you come in and cut the zip ties, pull them out. Notice how I have the zip ties. I have the, the lock part right here at the top so you can just easily cut this. And once you cut it, you can pull it through. Then you go ahead and put these two bolts in and start tightening them down. This is where the fun begins. It's going to take a little time and patience to get all these bolts down. You want to tighten them down evenly and then you want to torque them. If you need a little bit more torque with this wrench, you can take and add a little piece of pipe on here to give you a little more torque. This rubber hose has been put on this wrench to keep it from twisting because when you're working this bolt here like that, the wrench will want to twist. So the rubber is going to keep that wrench straight because it's going to be all oily and greasy. So you get them all snug down and then you get them all tight, about as tight as you can get them with this hex wrench. Then you have to go ahead and tighten up the oil cooler lines to complete the installation. Hook up the oil pressure line on the W116 and W123 on the W126. It's electric, you plug it in. And then you've got the banjo fittings on the turbo model for that oil line that goes up to oil the turbos. I hope you found this helpful. I realize it's not an actual scene in and under the car, but let me tell you, I tried to film this and it was almost impossible because of the restricted space that you're working with.